Welcome to Short Time. It is Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue with you. With me, as always, is my pal Dave Cross in here as we get going on another Short Time journey, Short Time summer. Dave, good morning. Good morning. You have had your extra cup of coffee this morning, I see. You're yeah. ready to go. You're fired yeah, you know, up. I'm trying out different kinds of uh, coffee flavors lately. You or know, just, you know, different kinds of caffeine levels. Big Sunday. <laughs> Uh, it of is Father's Day. Yeah. Yes, to all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Absolutely. For all of the children of fathers out there, yeah. do a nice thing. It doesn't have to be a gift. Right. It could just be you're going to cut the grass. Maybe dad cuts the grass. Who knows? And you're, you're going to cut the grass for him. Or you're going to barbecue for him. There you go. Or you're going to always a favorite. bake him a cake. I don't know. Just little <laughs> things. It's funny. Like I remember as a little kid... You know, I would do that. I cut the grass. The problem is, once I started cutting the grass, my dad's like, "You know what? You got this one." And <laughs> I never fun. stopped cutting the grass. <laughs> uh, but um, I, it's funny. I think maybe we, I chip and buy him a tie. He had all these ties he probably didn't like. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's uh, old school um, gifts. Maybe a cologne. I don't know. Like little things. Yeah, do something nice for dad today. Just let him have the day off. Let him yeah. lounge. Uh, and you said your dad loves the barbecue. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, so year maybe round. You, you have him sit down, but then again, he may like it and be like, you know he what? Does. I love my barbecuing. <laughs> it's okay. Just eat my food. And he, he knows I enjoy barbecuing um, okay. as well, but he he just loves being behind the grill, whatever. Burgers, but hot dogs, chicken. what is the one thing? You had to cook him one thing on the grill. Just one. What is it that he'll eat? What does he <sighs> like from you? It's, I, uh, holy, it holy can anything. Hol- it can't be multiple. It's just one thing. <laughs> what is it? I think he likes when I get creative. So if I were to you know, marinate some kind of steak or, or beef or whatever and put it on there how long like you a london broil or like how long are you do, do uh, like i have a buddy of mine he'll steam stuff he'll get up early in the morning get or i should say smoke um <laughs> and then do different things to prepare it it's an all-day event mm. when you get ready for the grill how long does it take you until that piece of meat chicken whatever hits the actual grill <sighs> that's the other thing there's somewhat of a <laughs> like a debate in in our house about who likes what growing up here now okay um I kind of like it in the medium, medium well variety. Uh, I think my dad kind of likes it around medium. I know okay, my mom so like my mom likes it well done. Okay. Um, different. Uh, I had, my siblings are kind of all over. You know, around the medium, medium well, or or a little less, a little bit more. Okay. On, on some occasions. So, but how much prep work before it's like okay, I'm going. I have this. Let's say it's a steak. Steak. You like steak? Oh yeah. Love okay. It. So here it is. You're going to di- put different seasonings and whatnot. Right. Right. Marinate it and whatever you're gonna. Put, do it with yeah how long prep work until that steak psh, right on the grill that's the thing i guess it depends how how much of a you know a flavor you want on it you know i you want figure, a lot of flavor not you're not cooking for me so you're you figure for your dad, but how long you do it in the morning right so maybe after breakfast put together some kind of I, to me i like make to make my own marinade i know uh, people like to use side of the bottom what it, are you putting in it it depends depends on the meat depends what i'm feeling that day one time this is it you only have one <laughs> shot at this what are you going to do well, I, I'm a big fan of using the different uh, Italian seasonings, you know, like okay. basil, parsley, okay. Italian seasoning. Uh, but I'm also a fan of making my own kind of barbecue sauce. What does that mean? It's you uh, got like what? Like do you put a blindfold a, on and just grab things? Cider vinegar. Just, okay. Sometimes, okay. believe it or not, yeah, I'm like, you know what? I feel like this would be a good flavor pairing. So I'll just. Pour whatever concoction what into happens. there, put it in a bowl, mix it up, and then put whatever steak or, okay. or meat into the bowl. Let it sit there for a few hours, and then okay, boom, throw it on the grill and okay, inhale all the great scents. Uh, is that first of all? <laughs> that is the best. The smell, not only oh, as you're yeah. cooking it, but it's just the backyard is full it's of. It's like all such a great aroma. It's like it's, ooh. you know what? <laughs> you get that going. How about do you ever put a little uh, corn on the cob on the grill? Oh yeah, man. That's another thing my dad loves too. Putting corn, uh, fresh corn too. You know, like corn on the cob, right on the grill. I have a trick. You want to hear it? Not yet. Well, I don't know if it's a trick. I learned this. <laughs> okay. All right. So first, before I even go there, corn on the cob. How do you do it on the grill? What do you do? Just throw it on there? What do you do? Wrap he, it in anything? He's. Uh, I haven't done it. I don't think myself. I know my dad usually puts leaves, puts the husk on like the top rack there. Okay. Let it warm up. So it's fully exposed. Mm. The corn. It's not wrapped. Uh, and then anything. sometimes just and then he'll pe- will help peel off the husk or whatever, and then uh, put it on there just so, so it doesn't burn. Okay. You ready? Yeah. You might want to write this down. Okay. This is going to be 
your special Dave's thing. corn recipe, everybody. And I can't barbecue that well, but okay. <laughs> he so can grill corn. So let's take the corn, right? Yeah. We're gonna with the husk get that off of there. Right, now you right. have the exposed corn. Mm -hmm. Get some tin foil. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. Put tin foil. Wrap your corn, but put some water in there. Mm. Make it a little moist as you do it. Okay. I'm telling you, you cook that up. When you open it up now, it's moist. Oh, it's, yeah. It's just juicy. It's just, it's something special. Then put in whatever, your salt or whatever you want after. But it's such a basic thing. But by wrapping it and just having the water just keeps it moist so mm. it doesn't dry out. Again, and just let it cook and let it put on the top rack, if you will. Yeah. And I'm telling you, and I'm not a good cook. In fact, I'm a lousy cook. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> but you can do corn well. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's so simple. And it just comes off. Uh, it's it's beautiful. I'm telling you. Anyway, just a little thought. Not to say what you're doing is wrong. It sounds <laughs> like it's fantastic. But something about that, it's so basic. And there's something about corn coming off the grill, right? Mm. With your hamburger, hot dog, whatever. You're, it's just, it's, it's, it's a game changer. You, you know, got to have it. And one thing that we, we've been planning for, uh, for weeks, I guess now, um, is on Father's Day. So I got... Uh, my all my sisters coming over, a brother coming over, and, and a bunch of the kids coming over. So we're gonna do. We did it. I think we did it last August. We did a, a pizza throwdown on the grill. Who said what to who? What on the grill? Okay. So I, I forget. It's got like these certain I don't know pans or whatever that he puts on the grill, or whatever. So each of stretches out whatever a certain amount of dough for a bunch of us to make our own pizzas. Not like not necessarily like the small personal pan pizza you right. see kids get at restaurants. Right. Uh, but a big enough one, you know, that they, they you can make your own. And the sauce is there. My mom makes uh, sauce, oh, heats so it up. Oh, uh, so she, uh, she, 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 she usually make pasta. It's out of a jar. Okay, got it. Right, Love no, it. fresh okay. sauce. So nice. she usually make pasta or whatever a couple of okay. days before, and then okay. save the rest of the sauce. We'll bring it out. So everybody gets sauce, and then it's kind of fair game after that. Um, fair game, okay. As much cheese or as many different varieties of cheese, uh, vegetables, cheese. Uh -huh. different meat. Um, different sauces, hot sauce, barbecue sauce. Hot you know, sauce. Okay. I mean, all this, all this fair. Okay. Uh, I think two of my two of my nieces, uh, Emily and Annabelle, when we did it uh, last August, were somehow they elected themselves the judges. They're like who won? <laughs> nine and ten years old. Um, I, I forget who they said one. I, th I think they wanted to nominate their own pizza. They made, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> somehow my everybody everybody else at the table like mine. <laughs> okay, didn't win. Okay. I forget who exactly won, but like okay, we've decided who won, and it's okay. you know so and so. So I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> All right, I got one more thing for you on the grill. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, bring it. Have you ever cooked breakfast on a grill? I've always wanted to. Do I it. haven't though. Knock, knock, I think it'd be there? fun to do, do like, do it. I don't know, make an omelet or throw some bacon. Can you imagine the smell of bacon in the morning Let me off a grill? <laughs> I, it's so funny. I don't know what it was. I woke up one day and I wanted to have breakfast, but I didn't want the house to smell of bacon. And I, I just, and I looked You out, say that like it's a bad thing. Well, no, it's not a bad thing, but you know what I mean? It, it can be a lot. <laughs> right, and right, I like right. the smell, but I yeah. just, for whatever reason. So I looked outside and of course I see the grill. Mm -hmm. There's a flame. You get a pan. You get a couple pans. Yeah. I went out. I'm like, I'm going to try this. So I got one pan had the bacon, right? Another pan, I did the eggs. Okay. It was fantastic. And you're outside. You're having a good time just being out, getting the sun, whatever. And you're enjoying your nice, if you like your coffee, your tea, whatever it is. But cook your breakfast on the grill, and I will say this, and I can't think of the name of it, but there are these sheets, if you will, oh, yeah. that you can put over the grill, because right. obviously eggs would, sh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's not a good thing. Don't do that. <laughs> Crack so, an egg on there. So if you don't do the actual pan, <laughs> yeah. put those sheets down, mm -hmm. and I did the eggs, right? I did the bacon. It was unbelievable. And it's funny. I think a week or two later, I had some people who came to visit. They were like, why is this not a thing? Why aren't people doing more of this? So I'm putting my hand up. Raising it and saying, go cook breakfast on your outdoor grill. I like and the idea. And thank me later. Yeah. There it is. I think I want to go do it now. <laughs> but think about, think about right now, uh, scrambled eggs, uh, regular eggs, uh, once over easy eggs, uh, bacon, uh, hash browns. Go throw some hash browns on the grill. Again, if you don't have those sheets, 
the pans. Yeah. And you could always close the top. You want more of like an oven. So you got two things going on here, Vic. Mm -hmm. You have obviously the flames. You're cooking away. What's stopping you from dropping the top on the grill? And now you've got the heat coming from all around. Sear the flavor. You got it. <laughs> what is, right? I like it. Right? Mm -hmm. How I'm about gonna have that? to try it. That is what you're going to do. Does your dad like eggs? Oh yeah. Does he like bacon? Yeah. Does he like hash browns? Maybe. Yeah. I think that's where you get them. <laughs> I think you're going to get them because he hasn't done it. Right. And hey, guess what? Happy Father's Day. Get yourself a cup of coffee, and when you get a moment, come on outside and boom, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Home run. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Huh? Any huh? day of the week, really. But uh, I'm just saying, morning, breakfast, you could do a pancakes. If you, go ahead, do yeah, some pancakes yeah, on yeah, there. Same concept with the pans and yeah. whatnot. That sounds like yeah. a great idea. That's it. That hey, lots to do for it's Father's Day. When it <laughs> just these little things. You know, you mentioned earlier with um, the tie and whatever. I, it brought up a memory. So me and my uh, three younger siblings, when we were like little kids, um, not like five, ten years ago. Uh, right, <laughs> it'd, be, right. it'd be a little weird. Sure. Um, <laughs> it was cute when we did it as kids. So we'd, uh, I don't know, my dad would be downstairs. My mom would bring us up upstairs or whatever, and we'd take out, e each of us would take out one of my dad's suit jackets, one of his ties, and, put and then just uh, wear it or tie it the best we could or whatever, and we'd walk downstairs and, you know, show them and take a picture and everything. So uh -huh. it was... <laughs> uh -huh. oh, that's cool. That's yeah, it cool. was a fun Father's Day tradition. How many you know, total growing up. brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, three of each. Wow. So, yeah. So, wait, three brothers, three sisters? Or mm -hmm. are you... Oh, my goodness. So, if I do the math, hold on, carry the one, do the... No. <laughs> You're a financial seven. guy. Yeah, I'm yep. going to figure this one out. <laughs> seven kids. Right. Wow. Lucky number seven. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Congratula well, congratulations to your family. That's a tremendous... Yeah. Uh, family you have there, and I really think this is going to be a special day. Yeah. Well, it is a special day for all the yeah, fathers all, out there. for all the dads out um, there. Yeah. And I'm so glad we talked about this, because it, at the end of the day, let dad have a break, whatever have he fun. does yeah, during the week, today. the weekend. He's always there Enjoy for it. all of us. This is a beautiful time to say thank you. Yeah. And here you go. Yeah. There it is. Got a great dad at home. <laughs> ah, that's good. He sounds like a I met him. What am I talking about? I know who he is. Yeah, I met him. You, you, great you man, met him. Fred. Yeah, good man. <laughs> Well, we got a great show on deck this morning. We've got the uh, couple dads themselves. Marlboro Township Police Chief Peter Pizzullo will be joining us, and Tom River Mayor Mo Hill will be joining us as well here on a great, Father's great Day show. edition of Short Time with Vin and Dave. Great things going. So for everybody up, go go make your dad some breakfast. Uh, you know, get prepared dinner. Do what you got to do. Make him a nice large cup of coffee um, and turn and up short. Get those pancakes going on the grill. Mm -hmm. Flapjacks and there pancakes for everybody. So have a great Father's Day ahead. We've got a great show for you here on Father's Day morning. Coming up next on Short Time with Vin and Dave, 94.3 The Point, 105.7 The Hawk. Hi, this is Southside Johnny from the Asbury Jukes, and you are listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. And I'm in the Hall of Fame. Whether you're in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management understands that you're more than your money, and they strive to help you realize your best life as they align your finances with your goals. Best of all, Shoreline's straightforward approach will include you in the process. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor committed to helping you weather life storms. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member Fin. SIPC. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Abenu, Dave Crossan with you here on Father's Day Sunday. And with us is a father and a police chief. That is the police chief in Marlboro Township, Monmouth County. Peter Pizzullo, chief, thanks for coming in this morning. Uh, thank you, Vin. Thank you, Dave. Uh, it's great to be here. I always thanks appreciate it. And of course, uh, before we get started, happy Father's Day to you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so a very proud father, right? So a uh, daughter at Rutgers and a son who's um, going to college in Minnesota to play football, right? Yes. Yes. Um, my, my daughter is uh, going to be 19 and she's just finished her freshman year at Rutgers. And then my son will be off in August to uh, St. Paul, Minnesota to go to the <laughs> University of St. Thomas. Division nice. one? D Division one. Very so, impressive. Uh, That's awesome. Yes. I'm very proud of the young man. Both both my children. So, so football, he played in Monmouth Regional, right? No, actually, he played for uh, St. John Vianney. Oh, that's it. And uh, he actually has a, 
the Ocean Mammoth All Star Game coming up uh, July thirteenth, I believe. Oh yeah, That's so fantastic. that'll that'll be fun. It's going to be played somewhere in Brick. They haven't given us a uh, a venue. Oh, there okay, we go. Very yeah, nice. That's, that's usually a fun contest. All the the seniors played in Ocean in Monmouth County. The Gridiron Classic there. Yes. Uh, you know the best of the best. You know, one final time to to suit up. You know, with in some high of school, your yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that'll be a fun fun game to watch before he heads out to St. Paul. Uh, so we want to talk about summer safety and everything. Of course, here as we head through. The middle of June toward the end of June, 4th of July coming up in a couple weeks. Um, and already people are enjoying the beaches and the boardwalks and different parks and different events and everything as well. Um, lots being discussed as well from uh, drownings, uh, whether at pools, lakes, beaches. Um, and I want to s- start there because I think it's important, just a continuing topic. Um Obviously, nothing that we've heard, you know, come out of Marlboro, but other towns across the state as well. But w- what is it that you need to stress or would like to stress to residents and visitors kind of coming through Marlboro, whether it's, you know, going to a park, lake, uh, at a swimming pool, big pool party, some things that you, you need them to know and to be aware of, um, or if they're going off swimming somewhere generally that they should be aware of with, you know, going with family, going with friends, going alone, making sure there's people there. I, I think when you just look at uh, residential pool safety, because Marlboro really doesn't have large bodies of water. Right, right. Um, we, we always stress to our residents to make sure when they're having parties or gatherings with uh, juveniles especially, just keep an, keep an eye on all the different age groups because uh, you know, children might not all have the same uh, swimming skill set. And uh, if, if a child gets tired or if they're horsing around, uh, something you know, bad could happen. And it only takes a minute. Um, and if you're, if you're really not paying attention, I know a lot of the families in Marlboro, if they do have parties, they've actually, uh, hired like a, a, a teen lifeguard or it's a great uh, idea. Yeah. It's it's very a, smart. And it, it's beneficial. And that way you could worry about the party and Correct. let them worry about the safety end of things. And you know, and I, I think it's a great thing because I think it's always important to be able to have people around watching, you know, no matter how old or how many people are there, because you know, some, there's always that chance, I guess, that something, God forbid, could happen, and you want to be able to know what to do and in a particular situation to have people around watching and keeping an eye on things. That is so smart. I mean, just to jump in there a minute, yeah. I mean, if you think about, you know, adults, they get distracted, and then you've kids in the pool, and I love the idea of yeah, now, having somebody, that, that's their focus to make yeah, sure that- They have a dedicated set yeah. of eyes. It's a, it's a, a genius uh, yeah. idea. Very smart. So, I mean, with I guess with any with any part, so we'll stick with I guess the the party theme, if you will. Obviously, you know, everybody wants to get together, have fun, you know, family barbecues or big get-togethers with friends, or you know, so on and so forth. But obviously, we, I imagine you could you'd say the same that uh, that Chief Little and Tom Zimmer said a couple weeks ago. You know, have fun, but you know, be responsible, be respectful as well. So, um, what are some of the things that you and your department are looking out for this this summer in particular to make sure that everybody you know can have a good time but they're also being responsible um you know n- and not just with with drinking at different parties but also at the particular hour of the night so that it's not a you know an all-night thing <laughs> yeah I, I think that um you know from the perspective of of hosting parties uh, over the summer and and um ensuring that everybody gets to and from safely na- nowadays we're given the opportunity to have uber um mm. you know lyft whatever it may be um it allows people to not have to worry about, you know, am I going to be the designated driver? Are you going to be the designated driver? Do I have to be concerned about my designated driver? Are they right. going to slip up? Um, and that's that's really saved the day. I, I think promoting the fact that leave the car at home, leave your keys at home, uh, rent an Uber, do, do it as a group of friends. Um, and, and that way you could share the cost. Um, and that way we can ensure that we're not going to have anybody under the influence or maybe less sharp uh, driving behind the wheel. And that is such a great point with Uber and Lyft, whatever you decide is it's not like, well, it's just one cab company and the cab company's like, well, we won't be there for another hour and people make a bad decision because yeah. of that. With Uber and Lyft, I mean, in a lot of cases, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, you've got somebody there. So there's really, there isn't an excuse. Yeah, easy yeah. enough to set up too. I mean, that, that's, that's a point you brought up as well. It got me thinking that um, right before New Year's to end uh, 2021, you and I had that similar conversation, obviously, in the advent of all these different ride sharing services to be able to go to and from parties or different events, you know, just go on your phone, go to the app and 
you know, and, boom, and you, you can have share. a ride I mean, instead of point, like on the app. It's like you have yeah. four people. You can kind of put in there. Okay, we're each paying. 25% of the and bill then you meet or whatever them. it is, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you, you could, what, Venmo each other now? Yeah. It's, right. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, technology has made it, it so it, much right, easier. Right. And uh, yeah, I think that if people just put some forethought, uh, it, it'll it'll save lives and uh, it's a much safer way to travel and enjoy yourself. And also too, you, you find with the Uber drivers or Lyft drivers, you get a lot of people from out of the area will come down here because of the opportunity to make money for themselves. Yes. You have an abundance of, of drivers that will come from North Jersey or Pennsylvania or wherever to be available. So the inventory and the availability is a lot greater. Yeah. It'd be a business for them. Yeah. Um, what are what are some of the signs of possible drunk driving? Like somebody's under the influence of alcohol behind the wheel. What are some signs that they would typically show either driving wise? Is it too fast, too slow? I mean, obviously, it, uh, I think there's the... Um, the stereotypical weaving in and out of lanes and everything. Uh, but what are some of the, th- the possible signs of drunk driving on the roads that your officers look for? So when an officer is looking to justify um, making a motor vehicle stop for driving under the influence or what it could even be careless driving. So sure, it's not so much speeding. It's, it's usually somebody that's driving probably less than the, the, the posted speed limit and uh, because their faculties aren't as sharp. Mm. And uh, yes, it's weaving in and out of traffic. It could be uh, just within the lane. Uh, you, you could see an individual that's struggling to maintain that stability of the vehicle. Um, and then obviously once they make the motor vehicle stop, they're going to interview the driver. And w- with throughout the interview, they're going to assess um, how well they can put together words, how well they can uh, have a thought process answer some very basic questions and then they have um psychophysicals that they they put an individual through to um test their overall level of possible um influence or sobriety is it more challenging now with marijuana being on the table more that it's been legalized with the drinking aspect that's that's making life very difficult for law enforcement oh sure Uh, you know, legislators, I, I understand that, you know, they did what they did for the citizens of the state of New Jersey. And um, we're, we're not debating that. I think that it's uh, difficult for law enforcement personnel to um, enforce uh, DUI or driving under the influence of marijuana uh, because it's not something that we can say, oh, I smell an odor of alcohol on your breath, right? So marijuana, once you've smoked it, it you can still smell it in the vehicle. Mm. Um, and then from there, yes, we, we could probably still utilize psychophysicals to let us know that they're not, um, they're not a hundred percent in control. Um, but then we've now had to revert to, um, a drug recognition expert. Those are specially trained officers and, uh, they will actually, uh, go through a series of scientific tests that they go through training, um, and through those tests, they can assess whether the individual is under the influence of marijuana or other drugs. Now, is it more difficult with the legislation that is, um, you know, that kind of prevents officers from, you know, searching a vehicle for additional marijuana that may be in there that you sense that you have a really good suspicion of it or that, um, or that somebody is driving high under the influence uh, of marijuana and would... What kind of questions would f- are allowed to be asked there? Are you allowed to ask them out of the vehicle? Yeah, there's there's definitely a limitation there, um, but I wouldn't say that that's going to be directly related to detecting whether or not they're under the influence mm. and if it's affecting the way they operate a vehicle. So yes, uh, you know, legislation has changed uh, to what level or extent we can search, um, and yes, questions that we can ask. But when we talk about just the fact that more people now, due to the legality of marijuana, are going to be operating. Uh, you know, they're because they're free. They no longer have to hide in the shadows and right. uh, maybe do it in their backyard or in their yeah. basement. Now you're going to have people just every day smoking it like a cigarette and and operating. Do you, are, is that a big concern for you this this summer with people just going out while high or under the influence of after smoking marijuana, whatever one joint, two joints, or um, you know, ingesting some THC oil or, or so on and so forth and, and everything that's now legal under this marijuana reform and a marijuana bill, um, you know, with it, more car accidents or more, you know, incidents at different parties and businesses with people who are 
showing different signs of behavior while high because smoking marijuana is now legal. Yes, and I, I'm not speaking statistically because I don't think there's really any statistics out there currently. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm just speaking from, um, I'm not going to say personal experience either because I've never used. But I think you're going to see throughout the summer more people like day smoking and operating as opposed to day drinking and mm. operating. Um, and we have to understand that there's going to be that loss of attention. And, and, and that's imperative when, you, when you're operating a motor vehicle. It's, it's that lack of attention. We have so many things that draw our attention, whether it's our cell phones and our radios and um, whoever's in the car with us, things of that nature. And now on top of that, you're going to have that uh, effect of marijuana on the brain and, and your ability to really focus. Um, and what people need to understand, especially in a town like Marlboro, is during the summer, that's, that's when the kids are going to be out. That's when people are going to be running and biking and, and, and doing things of that nature. So um, that's where my concern is, is that daytime operating under the influence and having more people flooding the streets of, of Marlboro Township or a town like Marlboro Township. And um, it just takes a split second for, for somebody to you know, run out in the street or, or, you know, that individual not to be as sharp as they could be. And, um, we're, we're talking about a, a possible fatality. Do you feel like there needs to be more patrols? Obviously, you know, people drink during the summer, every summer, but with everything now more free flowing with marijuana, that more patrols are needed, um, especially along bigger roads like route nine or other parts of Marlboro to just look out for, off behaviors, you know, marijuana or alcohol related or just careless driving overall to make sure that um, p the cars are doing what they should be doing, the drivers are, and that everybody is safe who's either driving near them or people who are walking um, near pedestrian streets in the burbs. Um, would I like to say that I can get more officers on the streets? Uh, sure. But, you know, everything comes with a cost. Right. Um, we, we tend to focus more on a, a change in our behavior. So <clears throat> during the summer months, uh, especially during the daytime hours or uh, weekends when people are going to be out and about, well, we just change our philosophy and and uh, our approach to um, reactive, proactive type patrols, and we'll just focus more on the motor vehicle stuff. Chief uh, Dave and I have to go to out go to a break now. Well, I mean, we can go out into the hall for a break. You know, grab a <laughs> cup of coffee. I mean, we don't have to go that far. You're welcome to join us too. Uh, but can you hang with us? Yes, definitely. I appreciate it. Excellent. More short time with Vin and Dave and Marlboro Township Police Chief Peter Pizzullo right after this. Hello, this is Chef David Burke on Short Time with Vin and Dave on ninety four three The Point and one hundred five seven The Hawk. And if you could see us, you'd know the three of us have perfect faces for radio. Whether you're in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management understands that you're more than your money, and they strive to help you realize your best life as they align your finances with your goals. Best of all, Shoreline's straightforward approach will include you in the process. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor, committed to helping you weather life storms. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information today. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member of SIPC. Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Avenue, Dave Crossan with you and with us here this hour is the police chief of Marlboro Township, Peter Pizzullo. We've been talking about the effects of drugs, uh, particularly marijuana and alcohol. But chief, I want to start this segment off with another part of the vehicle traffic conversation as well. Uh, whether somebody's under the influence or not, you know, somebody could be completely sober just driving here and there and uh, you know, come up with a, a number of distracted driving cell phone or otherwise, or maybe they just don't see somebody coming out. Uh, but what are some things that you need, you want to relay over to people out there driving through Marlboro vehicles, uh, watching out for each other, watching out for pedestrians. And then on the flip side to all that, what are some things you need pedestrians to know so that they're not walking out into the street when they shouldn't be? No, it, it's definitely a, a two-sided argument. I think both uh, the pedestrian and the motor vehicle operator uh, need to be equally uh, alert as to what's going on now that the summer months are here. Um, for a motor vehicle operator, you, in a town like Marlboro, you're just going to see a lot more people uh, getting out there, whether it be exercising via running, walking, biking. Um, you're going to see a lot of people walking their pets and um, a lot of students or you know, freshly 
um, release students for the summer are gonna <laughs> summer break. Yeah, they're they're gonna be out there riding their bikes. That's and their a big one. They're riding and, the bike. Yeah, be very dangerous. So, um, and and we get it. Uh, it it's a, it's a change, and everyone needs to be mindful of the fact that uh, they're they're gonna be out and about, and it's just a matter of you know broadening your your spectrum and you know get making sure your peripherals all all work and um, maintaining speed limit that's important um, a, a lot of our our town is is, is broken down based on residential and non-residential mm-hmm. so um, I think that uh, from a non motorist or, or a pedestrian standpoint um, obviously crossing where they should be crossing and uh, riding their bike with the flow of traffic as opposed right. to against like the flow of traffic. Just cutting right over and <laughs> saying, yeah, hey, excuse me. Look. Well, I think that happens sometimes with pedestrians or people riding their bike. They're thinking, well, you, hey, they, cars have to really watch out for, for me riding my bike. But if you know, all of a sudden somebody comes straight out in front of a car, it's, you know, yeah. bad things can happen. It's almost not fair. At right, that point right. Because, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I, I think for the most part, um, most of the residents uh, understand mm. um, how to work together and uh we we don't see as much as let's say uh a, 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 a summer town like a shore town uh where they get right. that huge influx right. yeah and and everyone's down there and they're pretty much walking everywhere um but we, we get our fair share of bicyclists and and people that like to get out there and jog so with, with regards to uh, obviously behavior in the summer obviously you know more People are out of school, you know, going on vacation, taking days off here and there, more places to do, lots of fun things to go to and everything. Um, so obviously on a nice day, you want to get there as soon as you can and enjoy the day or whatever. But obviously that, um, you know, everybody can get a little impatient at times. But what are some reminders for, for drivers as well to kind of keep things in mind so that they're doing what they should be on the road and being safe not only for themselves and whoever else is in their car, but obviously everybody else out there on the road or pedestrians, people on their bikes, um, to make sure that everybody's being patient, that they can, even if it takes a few extra minutes, get to where they're going um, in one piece, so to speak. I, I always start with um, you know knowing your surroundings. So if you're obviously within the town that you live in, just make sure you understand um, the roadway and, and how it may turn or... or uh, what type of vehicular traffic and pedestrian traffic you might, you know, possibly see. But then uh, next move right to the fact that it's it's about paying attention and the whole distracted driver, which we discussed earlier, um, making sure that you're not worried about your cell phone while you're operating. Make sure you're, you know, within your confines of your vehicle. If you have other passengers that you're paying attention to what you're doing and not what they're doing type of deal. Um and just you know, try try not to to rush and speed to get from from point A to point B because um, you probably wish you, you took it back. If God forbid right. somebody got hurt, of course. You know, um, you know and I, if it, we've <laughs> hit on we've hit on so much in the safety topic as well, Chief. But I want to open it up to you as well. Some things that you want to address with uh, with anything going on this summer in Marlboro. Some some safety issues or some topics that you want to discuss to get out there to residents and people going to and through uh from Mar- marlboro yeah I, um a, a huge topic that, that i would i'd love and i appreciate the opportunity love to discuss um sure has to do with um motor vehicle thefts oh and yeah it, it's been a it's been a um a, a, a daunting task uh at least for marlboro township i'm sure a lot of the the, the towns oh, yeah. in the state have been dealing with the same issues um our mayor you know mayor hornick he he's done a great job we we have a great partnership and uh, he came up with a uh, program called See Something, Say Something, We'll Do Something. Sure. Okay. And uh, it sort of works hand in hand with uh, what I've been promoting, which is, you know, just lock your vehicles, take your key fobs inside, um, and, uh, you know, even lock your residence, that, that kind of thing. But together with the See Something, Say Something, We'll Do Something, um, our residents are being asked to work with law enforcement. Mm-hmm. And, and be the eyes and ears or that extra set of eyes and ears. If they see something out of place, whether it be a vehicle that's not normally in their neighborhood, that's trolling the neighborhood, you know, and they could tell it's just out of place, give us a call and, and we'll show up and we'll do the investigation. And um, it could be something as innocent as somebody's lost. Right. But it, it also has led us to situations where we've gotten people that were here specifically to do bad. 
do you find that a lot of people leave their cars unlocked? I mean, it's so easy now with, you know, the, the key, you know, key fob or whatever, right. hit the button and walk yeah. away. Marlboro, Marlboro residents, um, I, and I, we, I understand that I grew up in Marlboro. I, I've been a Marlboro resident for or going on 39 years. There you go. And I could tell you right now, you, you get that feeling, right, that you live in a utopia. Okay. That, okay. that bubble. And, and sure. you're like, I could leave my car door open. Who's going <laughs> to, who's going to take my <laughs> right, car? Right. Okay. I live in Marlboro. Right. Um, but. They found out the hard way that uh, you know certain individuals come down and they're they're just innocently like out of their driveways type or oh, on the right road. Out of your, it doesn't oh, matter. Okay. Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll walk onto your property yeah. and pull a handle. Okay, and if that door's open and That's they it. could start yeah. the car, they're gone. Okay. Um, so you know we it took a little while for for the residents to really catch on. Mm. Um, but since they've done so, we we've seen a, a market drop. Okay. Wow. In in stolen vehicles. It's good. The the attempts are still there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's difficult for us, and we've we've r ramped up patrols uh, to really target um, that whole issue. Sure. Okay. So we've been doing a very proactive attack, um, but it's difficult for us to be everywhere. Right. Um, so we're we're still going to get those that slip through the cracks, and they're still going to try to you know pull handles. Um, so the attempts are still there, but. Um, Residents are reporting them. Residents are videotaping them because they all have ring doorbell. Oh, yeah, That's another beautiful yeah, video point. evidence. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and we we've been catching the bad guys. So I mean, we we've made since we started this whole thing in March. Okay, we've made thirteen arrests. Oh wow! Wow. So that's been huge. That's great. Um, and we've recovered a lot of a lot of the stolen vehicles. Um, but more importantly, we just rolled out with the mayor. Uh, we rolled out a program where Marlboro residents are uh, registering and taking an, an oath um, that they are going to lock their cars, take their key fobs inside, secure their residence, and they're going to see something and they're going to say something and they're going to do. So we're going to do something. So um, when they register online through the township website, they're getting a lawn sign that pretty much states all those points. Oh wow! And we. Our officers deliver them, and they get to meet the residents, and they they put it in the front lawn there, and uh, it's really taken off. So the, you know it's the residents, it, it's it's a beautiful thing because I think we've seen something positive come out of something that wasn't so positive. Right, right, good point. And uh, there's there's been a really a strengthening of the bond between the department and the and the residents that we serve. So it's been good. Chief, have you found with the the car thefts or vehicle burglaries that it's a particular particular types of cars or is it more just uh crimes of opportunity where you know wherever the criminals can you know they pull a handle oh this car's unlocked I'll, I'll just take it they're, they're definitely looking for uh certain kinds of high-end vehicles we, we can't exactly pinpoint but right. mo uh, right. mostly high-end vehicles uh but it is still a crime of opportunity because sure <clears throat> they're they're showing up in in town and they're sort of walking through developments mm. and uh usually at night and what they'll do is they'll just pull handles. They'll go right through the development, just pulling handles. Well, one thing too, I know with cars, to, you know, you have their the side mirrors go in if it's locked. Yes. So if you see the mirrors out, that usually will be like, well, okay, most it, likely that car is unlocked. Exactly. Okay. It's almost inviting them to, right. You know, come take a look mm -hmm. at my car. Right. Got take it. it for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Please bring it back. Well, <laughs> if you don't mind, bring it back. Bring if it back. Take it around the block. Yeah. You know, bring it back a little. Maybe fill up the tank while you're at it. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Hey, if these yeah. gas prices. I don't know if that's <laughs> gas prices true. rising above exactly. five dollars. <laughs> so. If you want to take my, if you want to pay for my gas, uh, chief, or whether it's uh, car burglaries or, or something else, because obviously with the new program, the whole uh, see something, say something. Should people? Just call the main line, the the five three six zero one hundred number. If they see something, or is it uh, to, as opposed to calling nine one one? Just call that main line. Um, it, it really just depends on the situation. Okay. So I, I mean, obviously, if if you happen to witness your vehicle being uh, attempted stolen, uh, you would call nine one one. But um, a, a lot of residents, if they they see a vehicle driving through the neighborhood, they're not going to call nine one one. They're going to call our main number, and uh, you know, dispatch will handle it and just send an officer out there to check it out how valuable because you, you mentioned the ring doorbells as well earlier but if people happen to get video or pictures during one of these types of crimes or something else how, how valuable is it's, that it's if, a game changer um you know video over the last 10 years has provided law enforcement with uh, uh, a many number of, of benefits 
you know, whether it's body worn cameras, whether it's in car cameras, and now when you have residential cameras, right? And and you know the Ring doorbell program, um, we're able to get license plates, makes of vehicles, time frames of when vehicles might be coming through the neighborhood. Good point. So uh, from an investigative standpoint, it, it really does benefit us in solving a, a lot of crime or at least giving us leads that we wouldn't have had in the past. We've talked to certainly about safety uh, on a number of fronts as well, Chief, this summer, but uh, in terms of any kind of events going on in Marlboro, National Night Out or other things, is there anything that uh, the police department has going on this summer or things that you know of uh, that are going on in Marlboro Township that you want to get out there? Well, sure. We, we participate in uh, National Night Out. That's coming up in August. Um, we also have Marlboro Day. That usually comes up uh, in September. Oh, yeah. So it's like a back-to-back for us. <laughs> nice. Um, we just participated in the Torch Run. Okay. Which was for uh, Special Olympics. Um, we, we enjoy participating in that. It's always an honor uh, to, to play a role in that. Um, and a, as a matter of fact, one of our uh, officers, our community policing officer, James Caulfield, uh, you may have met him a oh, yeah. uh, yeah, couple of years back. <laughs> so uh, he was asked by the state of New Jersey to be a representative um, for the uh, Torch Run oh, wow. Special Olympics in Florida. That's awesome. And he just got back. Um, he actually... Yeah, he just got back like uh, tail end of last week. So uh, he had a great time there, uh, was able to uh, chaperone and be an ambassador uh, to all the athletes. It was, it was just great, great to see, and we're very proud. Chief, as we uh, start wrapping up here, what, what is it that y- you like being a chief of in Marlboro Township? What is it like to be a police officer in Marlboro? Some of the things that you enjoy about working with the Marlboro community? Well, I'm, at this stage of my career, I'm, uh, I don't even know if they would consider me an officer anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, it's chief. A, hey, lot, a, chief lot, a lot of my well. officers are like, you're a pencil pusher. So, <laughs> um, No, as a chief, look, I'm, I'm honored. Uh, it's uh, a position you, 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 you hope to get sure. in, in your career, or at least I've always uh, you know, set that goal. And uh, it's an honor because, like I said before, I, I grew up in, in this town. And uh, you know, to serve... The residents of Marlboro let them know that uh, you know I take so much pride in, in Marlboro Township, um, and look, I, I'm blessed to have some really amazing police officers. They they go out there every day, uh, they work hard, they're intelligent, um, and I I mean I'm lucky, I'm lucky. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, 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 great yeah, great town in Marlboro and you you certainly done a great job uh leading the department the last couple of years. And yes, I remember uh, Officer Caulfield. I'm sure he got a nice tan down in Florida too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, uh one final question cuz obviously it's Father's Day and everything. So uh uh, we mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, you know, that your daughter at Rutgers and son going to, to St. Thomas in, in um, Minnesota to play football. Uh, but any particular barbecue or celebration going on Father's Day today? Um, I'm, I'm, we're just going to keep it simple. Nice. Uh, we're, we're actually, it's funny, we're, we've blended uh, both Father's Day and like all the graduations. So oh, okay. um, That's a big yeah, event. So we, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's not <laughs> nice. at my house, thank God, but <laughs> it, it'll be at my sister-in-law's house. It, it, nice. It's, it's going to be where, uh, you know, all the dads and then um, I think there's what, how many of them now? Uh, five cousins. Oh, wow. And, and they've all, you know, they've all graduated now. So ah, Nice. Congrats. Um, yep. And they're, they're going to be celebrating sort of both at the same time. It, it'll be great. interesting. There you go. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be a fun get together today. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like good weather. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Chief, uh, happy Father's Day to you. And, and thanks for coming in today to uh, discuss summer in Marlboro. Vin, thank you. Dave, thank you. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's always an honor to be here. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank uh, you. Likewise, likewise. Always great speaking with you, Chief. More short time with Vin and Dave coming up next. Hi, this is High Performance Executive Coach Dana Cavalia and former Director of Strength and Conditioning for the New York Yankees. And you're listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. It's always great to hang with champions, and these two guys are champions. Whether you're in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management provides clarity through the complexity with offices in Manchester and Manahawkin. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information and start your financial journey with comfort and security today. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC. 
Welcome back to Short Time with Vin and Dave. Vin Ebenu, Dave Cross, and with you. We were just uh, greeted by Marlboro Police Chief Peter Pizzula, who just joined us a few moments ago, talking about summer safety, different things going on with uh, driving under the influence, parties, pool safety, um, you know, driving to and fro, pedestrian safety as well, national night out, um, you know, vehicle burglaries, motor vehicle thefts, and the new program they have out, See Something, Say Something. So make sure you reach out to Marlboro Police, go to their Facebook page, and go to the Marlboro Township website and get involved with that. So, I mean, like you said, 13 arrests with related to vehicle burglaries and car thefts over the last couple months alone. And, of course, Father's Day, so we talked about oh, yeah. you know, the pride of being a father. So a, lot, a great visit from the Marlboro Police Chief Peter Pizzullo, Dave. Well, the one thing that was brought up, which I thought was so important, you, you hear about these car burglaries. And, you know, I know myself, I just hit the button on my car fob or whatever you call it, a lock up. And you, you make the assumption that everybody's doing that. But in these nice communities, you think, ah, I, I don't have to. It's right. not you going to happen to me. safe neighborhood. But as we discuss, it's happening out of people's driveways. Mm-hmm. And one thing, too, with some of the cars, when you lock it up, the side mirrors actually come in. So if somebody's driving by and they see the mirrors out, that's an invitation to at least take a look to say, hey, that may be a car I can steal because it's unlocked. I see the, the mirrors out on the side. So even if it's in your driveway, don't think that, hey, that's nobody's going to come on my property and, and take it. It leaves it open for an invitation for somebody to take a look. And because of what's been happening, don't take it for granted. Go ahead and lock those cars up. It's, it's a sad situation the last couple of years, even before the pandemic with these car thefts, vehicle burglaries. I mean, you, you go back 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't as rampant of a problem mm-hmm. where you're like, all right, if I leave the windows open in my car, obviously during the day, okay. But now right. in the last few years, people are, I think, starting to get more cautious and more, you know, I guess defensive, smart, if you will, double, triple checking, making sure that their cars are locked and taking a look around their vehicle to say, all right, I don't want to leave anything on the seats or on the console, right, put all my point. valuables. Good you know, obviously, if it's something that belongs in the car, keep right. it in the, the glove box or, or wherever else. But obviously, if it's something that belongs inside, just bring it with you. Don't Correct. leave your wallet or anything like that in the car. Correct. And also, too, the other point that was brought up was the uh, these doorbells, the ring doorbells that oh, now yeah? have the cameras. So think about how great that is. Somebody comes to your house or makes an approach. Now you actually have video of possibly a car in the neighborhood that shouldn't be there or the car that came up with somebody that tried to steal the car or a package off your front door or whatever. Um, what was mentioned was able to get possibly license plates, possibility at least get the make of the car, the mm. type of car that can be uh, a, you know great importance to maybe catch the person. And what was it, yeah. 13 arrests so far? Right. Uh, the the uh, video pictures have made such a huge difference. And you mentioned uh, just overall in the last few years, I mean, if you have a ring doorbell and it captures it, great. I mean, if you're in a situation as well, obviously, I think Chief Little or, some, or somebody mentioned it a couple weeks back, you know, a situation where you're not putting yourself at risk and you're in a safe position where you can capture video or grab a picture or, you know, mentally remember the description of a license plate or a vehicle or something like that and call police, it, it would help them respond that much quicker. They're like, now we have this much more information. Yeah, at least, you know, even if it's the make of the car, mm. you know, even if it's on a license plate, be like, okay, Whatever look out helps. for this this gray van, or I'm just making that yeah. up, or, or something to at least say, okay, maybe in another neighborhood, oh, there's this gray van what is it doing here or whatever the situation is and if it's an active crime like chief pizzula said you know that's a situation to call 911 but i mean if you see something suspicious going on in the area you don't think it's right it's out of the norm you, th- you feel Make like call. something going on just call the regular police line obviously not just in marlboro as well any any town that you live in in ocean monmouth county or beyond you know i, I feel it better to call the police line the police department and at least speak with a dispatcher or somebody working at the department or email them, whatever, to say, hey, you know what? Don't Some, recognize this something's car. Not, yeah, something's this not right. Strange. Maybe it's a car. Maybe it's just a suspicious person walking, walking through the around. neighborhood right. that you, you f- is, is up to something suspicious or, or so And I don't so recognize that as one of my neighbors. Yeah, I get right. it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you, you know, don't be calling the police on every single thing. You, know, you, you never know somebody's situation, so scope it out a little bit. But obviously, if you think it's something up to no good, you see people up to no good yeah, go with your gut graffiti, if something doesn't feel right, painting, right you know even something misdemeanor lies helps you know because the uh, neighborhood watch right you you look out for each other help mm-hmm. each other keep the community safe so right. just do your part and i've and so many police departments or prosecutors offices have 
these anonymous tip lines as well. So if you're a little hesitant, send it in anonymously and then you could help solve a crime no matter how small or large scale it is. So great conversation with Chief Pizzullo and, you know, just some important safety reminders as well. I agree. We Good interview. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, always great to have him. He was a great guest. Uh, we've got another great guest coming up next hour, Dave. It is the mayor of Tom's River, Mo Hill. Nice. He's joining us to discuss some summer events. And the, I want to ask him about the redevelopment project that's been going on. We heard about it earlier this year, last year. So let's see what's going on in Tom's River. Not okay. just in the summer, yeah, looking but, forward but to year it. round as well. Obviously, they got antique car shows. So lots yeah. to discuss with Mayor Hill coming up. And that'll follow. Dave's financial wake up call next. So grab that coffee, get the breakfast going, turn up the volume. We got more short time with Vin and Dave coming up next. Hi, this is Christy Pierce Rampone, former U.S. women's soccer team captain, Olympic gold medalist, World Cup champion, and Point Borough High School alum. And you're listening to Short Time with Vin and Dave on 94.3 The Point and 105.7 The Hawk. Tune in for some real conversation with Dave and Vin. You don't want to miss this.